Hello there, welcome to Antif English News Bulletin. I am Bhavana Kesi. In the beginning, we have the headlines. Coalition partners struggling to reach consensus on electoral seat allocation. Task force to continue discussion today as well. At least 10 people killed and 15 injured in a series of stabbing attacks in Canada. Police say suspects still on the run. Nepal playing against Kenya in the last match of the three-match one-day series. Clean sweep on the cards for Nepal against the host. Uh, Nick Rios beats the defending champion Medvedev to reach quarterfinals of U.S. Open. Javier becomes first African woman to reach quarterfinals since 1988. Welcome back. You are with NTV English News Bulletin. Now to the news in details. The task force of the five ruling coalition formed to allocate seats among the five ruling parties is holding a meeting today as well. The task force will discuss seat sharing among the five parties in the November 20 elections to the House of Representatives and Province Assembly. The, the top leaders of the five parties have already instructed the task force to finalize and submit the report of the situation of the 165 constituencies under the House of Representatives. The task force is meeting to be held at the Prime Minister's official residence in Balwatar this afternoon will try to settle the differences among the ruling parties on the allocation of the seats. The task force has been meeting for almost a month to finalize the seat allocation, but no conclusion has been reached yet. Chairman of the Standing Committee of National People's Congress of China, Li Jiangsu, is scheduled to visit Nepal from September 12 to 15. The visit comes at the invitation of Speaker Agni Prasad Sapkota. Speaker Sapkota and Chairman Li will hold delegation label bilateral talks on September the 12th. The Speaker will host a banquet in honor of Li and the members of his delegation in the same evening. During his stay in Nepal, Li will pay courtesy calls on President Vidadevi Bhandari on September the 14th and Prime Minister Ser Bahadur Deva on September the 13th. Lee will also meet the Chairman of National Assembly Ganesh Prasad Timalsina and Minister of Foreign Affairs Dr. Narain Kharka. The Chief of the Indian Army, General Manoj Pandey, received a guard of honor by a contingent of the Nepali Army at the Army headquarters this morning. The Indian Army Chief is on a five-day visit to Nepal at the official invitation of the Chief of Army Staff Prabhu Ram Sarma. On the occasion, General Pandey also planted a sapling on the premises of the main building of the Army headquarters. Prior to this, he laid a wreath and paid tribute to the brave soldier at the Beer Smarak at Army Pavilion in Turik Hill. Meanwhile, President Bidadevi Bhandari, the Supreme Commander of the Nepali Army, is conferring the rank of Honorary Chief of Nepal Army on General Manoj Pandey amid a special function at the office of the President at Sheetal Nivas this afternoon. It has been a custom of practice between the armies of the two neighbors to confer the title to each other's army chiefs since 1950 as a symbol of the good military ties. Well, with this update, a time to go for a short break, but still to come we have. Welcome back. Now to the updates from the international front. At least 10 people have been killed and another 15 injured in a stabbing rampage in Canada's central Saskatchewan province, police say. The victims are found in 13 different locations. Two suspects named as Damien Sanderson, aged 31, and Miles Sanderson, aged 30, are on the run and considered armed and dangerous. Residents have been told to shelter in place as a massive manhunt continues across the entire vast province. Powerful typhoon Hinamnor knocked down some trees in Miyako Islands of Okinawa Prefecture on Sunday and had temporarily cut power to hundreds of the households. Footage on Japanese television showed trees violently second by the storm with fierce rainfall hitting the pavement. Officials say the slow-moving typhoon could add to the rainfall and risk of flooding in the southern region. The storm will fluctuate in intensity over the warm ocean waters of the East China Sea through Monday 
Monday, local time as it approaches southern South Korea where it may make a landfall later Monday night. In Chile's capital of Santiago, horns blared in celebration at, as groups of people gathered at numerous intentions. The vote marked the climax of a process that began when the country, once seen as a paragon of stability in the region, exploded in the student-led street protest in 2019. More updates lined up on the other side, but before that, let's have what we have coming up next. Welcome back. Now to more updates. As a new Prime Minister prepares to move into Downing Street on Monday, the debate over Boris Johnson's legacy will linger long after he departs. Johnson laid Britain out of the European Union and won a landslide election victory before his government collapsed in a heap of ethics scandals. During his final appearance in Parliament as Prime Minister in July, he summed up his three years in office as mission largely accomplished. Johnson's backing for the Leave campaign in Britain's 2016 referendum on EU membership was a vital to its victory. Meanwhile, Johnson's successor as the UK Prime Minister will be revealed later when either Liz Truss or Rishi Sunak is named next Conservative leader. A South Korean activist said he pressed ahead with flying 20 used balloons with, with COVID-19 relief items and an anti-North Korea placard across the tense border despite the North's recent warning of a deadly attack over his activities. Park Sang-hak, a North Korean defector turned activist, said the, uh, the balloons launched from a South Korean border town on Sunday carried 20,000 masks and tens of thousands of of the Tynelon and vitamin C tablets. For years, Park has floated helium-filled balloons with numerous small anti pyongyang leaflets with harsh criticism of the Kim family's rule in North Korea. More updates lined up on the other side, but before that, let's have what we have coming up next. Now to sports. Nepal today is facing host Kenya in the third and last match of the tri-match one-day series. The match will kick off at 12.45 p.m. at Gymkhana Cricket Ground in Nairobi. The Nepali side is looking to clean sweep the series 3-0 by registering a third win in today's match. Nepal has already won the tri-match OD series against Kenya with the match still at hand. Nepal had won the first match by seven wickets while secured 17 runs victory in the second match. Nick Rigios eliminated defin defending champion U USO defending US Open champion in women's rounds, Javier extended her career best run at Flossing Medios by beating Veronica Kuderemetoba 7 6 6 4 to reach the quarterfinals. The number five seeded Javier was the runner up at Wimbledon in July and now is into the quarterfinals at a major tournament for the fourth title. Javier will face on seeded Azla Tomlanajovic for a semi final berth. Well, with this update, we come to the end of this English news bulletin. But before we say goodbye, a quick reminder of the major stories. Coalition partners struggling to reach consensus on electoral seat allocation. Task force to continue discussion today as well. At least 10 people killed and 15 injured in a series of stabbing attacks in Canada. Police say suspects still on the run. Nepal playing against Kenya in the last match of the three-match one-day series. Clean sweep on the cards for Nepal against the host. And Nick Krigios beats the defending champion Medvedev to reach quarterfinals of U.S. Open. Jabber becomes first African woman to reach quarterfinals since 1988. Well, that's all we have in this edition of English News Bulletin. We shall see you again with next round of English Bulletin at 6 p.m. Till then, have a, have a great time and to stay tuned with us. Namaste.